Ladies and gentlemen, for the next fight of the evening, introducing first in the blue corner, he's coming from Azerbaijan. Make some noise for Ilkim Gatsimo. We now move to the welterweight division here in EFC, Ilkin Gazimov, the monster from Azerbaijan by way of France. His last fight was ruled a draw. That was on March of 2018. And before that, though, in 2017, was riding a five-fight winning streak, undefeated for the entire year in 2017. This is his second fight here this year. Very dangerous man on the ground. Five of his seven wins coming by way of submission in a wide variety of submission stoppages here from Gasimov. We're talking about rear naked chokes, heel hooks, arm bars, a Brabo choke, and a few more. He's really run the gamut of submissions his overall record, seven wins, one loss, and one draw. So comes in here with quite a bit of steam, quite a bit of momentum, and is going to be taking on the top dog in the EFC welterweight division. In fact, the current and reigning champion. However, the belt is not on the line here tonight. Introducing his opponent into the red corner. He's coming from Moldova. Make some noise for Luca Buckley. I might chip up, man. I got this shot. Well, that familiar music rings out inside the Menage Arena once again here in Kishino for the current welterweight champion of the world, Luca Pokli. As I mentioned, the title not on the line in this contest, a title which he won at EFC 7 one year ago in November of 2017 by defeating Sergio Barbarossa. He is undefeated here in Eagles having competed at EFC 2, 3, 7, and 9. Two of his victories have come by way of submission, two by decision. His last fight at Eagles 9 was a first win submission. Before the fight, Luka Poglitz said that he is going for the first round KO. He wants to end this standing up. He wants to prove that he can get the job done on his feet and he wants to win spectacularly here tonight by knockout. FIA President Doran Damir keeping a close eye on this contest. He said before this bout, this is kind of a test for the upcoming title defense of Luka Pokli. But in my opinion, it's also a dangerous fight to take. Because I, as I said, as he was standing here outside the cage during his last contest. It's the kind of fight where, look, if you're the champion and you're not defending the belt, you have absolutely everything to lose and nothing to gain. Because if this guy beats you, what does that mean for you? Can you really call yourself a real champion anymore? We'll find out right now. Presenting the blue corner, weighing 77 kilogram, height 1.75 meters, having a personal record of nine fights, seven wins, one loss, and one draw. He's fighting for Azerbaijan. Make some noise for Ilkin Gasimo. Presenting the red corner, 
weighing 77.1 kilogram, height 1.78 meters, having a personal record of four fights, three wins and one losses. He's fighting for Moldova. Make some noise for Luca Pukle. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a welterweight bout under 77.1 kilogram, five minute, three round, extra one round with MMA rules. Referee in the ring, Alexandru Petkoglo. Underway here in this welter weight contest here at EFC 10. Champion Luca Pokli, the red tape, and challenger Yukin Gasimov, or rather contender, I should say. This is championship is not up for grabs. I've seen it happen a number of times here in Eagles where the champions are in action but not defending the titles so a lot of times they have not really fully established who is the number one contender yet but the champion wants to fight and wants to get inside the cage and so they're not going to stop him Oakley had a very very cracking low kick there as they go back up against the cage here and Gazimov looking for a takedown hooks the leg on the inside nice throw there what a beautiful maneuver that was from Luca Pogli. See the way he just swiveled his hips and then threw him there. And he landed very awkwardly with his right shoulder on the canvas, his left one up against the cage. Here come the left hands. Wow! Smashing left hand. Well, he's not the welterweight champion for nothing, folks. He said he wanted to end this fight standing up with a knockout victory. Well, nobody would blame him for finishing this thing on the ground right now. He almost punched himself in the face. Moving right into full mount here. And this is not good news for Gasimov. Big right hands going in now. Right on the side of the head. And now on the other side. Gasimov. On the receiving end of a brutal choke right now. Let's see if he can finish it. He's trying to buck him off. Pokley. Oh, boy. He is really wrenching in that choke. The lights are going to go out if he doesn't tap. The lights are going to go out if he doesn't tap. Pokley really wrenching back. Boy, his neck may be a couple inches longer before the end of the night. Takes him down to the canvas now. I don't think he's got that hooked as tight as he did before. And out he goes. Wow. Gasimov really dodged a bullet there. And you can see Pokleet there trying to get some oxygen in his lungs. No doubt expended a tremendous amount of energy executing that maneuver. Certainly Gasimov feeling the effects of that one as well. Very close call there on the ground and in the standing position. And now it's Gazimov on top on the canvas. Here come the right elbows from the Frenchman. Gazimov trying to get past the left leg of the champ and has done so and finds himself now in side control. See what he can do from this situation. Just grinding the forearm and the elbow, just grinding it across the face now of Pokley. That makes life just a little bit more miserable there and just a chiseling shot there and you can see the immediate reaction from Pokley. 
Well, as I said, it has been a full year now since Pokelete has defended his title. And so I think it's high time that somebody gets a shot at that championship. And uh, it may happen in February at the next EFC event. We'll have to wait and see as again, more short little elbows really having an effect now on Pokley. Boy, what an interesting round here. We saw Pokley with some very damaging blows in the beginning and then a near submission attempt. But from there on out, Gazimov has really been dominating here. Look at the way he is just smashing and mashing his head against the canvas with those forearms and elbows, just brutalizing the champ. Here comes the crown and pound. Oakley doing his best to try to get to a standing position, but he is really being punished here. What a great comeback in that round by Ilkin Gasimov. Via President Dorian Damir, very concerned look on his face. You can see the, the gears grinding inside of his head, trying to figure out exactly perhaps who was the winner in that round. Pokley right now sitting on the ground, trying to get some oxygen in his lungs. And Ilkin Gazimov in a standing position as we go back and take a look at some highlights from round number one. Look at that throw. That was just a, that's poetry in motion right there, folks. Pokley had it. I, I think that round was almost 50-50 in my opinion. I think the first half of the round solidly belong to Luka Pokli. The throw, the strikes, the submission attempt, but then the second half of the round was all Gazimov. He made a tremendous comeback and absolutely dominated on top with some vicious, vicious strikes. action in round number two. Let's see what these guys got left. That was a very taxing round number one for both gentlemen. Hopefully looking for that knockout still. He says he wants to end this thing in round one. Well, that's not going to happen by knockout, and that could still happen. Crippling low kick that time to the outside of the knee joint of Ilkin Gazimov. Oh, boy. Great exchange there by these two. You can see the Pokley, the taller of the two fighters, for sure. And again, look at that. Just powers him by the head right to the ground. Pokley trying to pass into the full mount, but got cut short. Can't get over the left knee of Gazimov. Again, he's got that left arm draped around the throat. Trying to sink in that choke again. Hopefully it certainly has finished people before by submission. You can see he's got that left arm around the neck. Look at the angle where he's, oh my, that has got to be uncomfortable. Is it enough to finish it? I don't think so. He's going to power out of it here and he popped it right out. the head there maybe set up a triangle but couldn't execute it now it finds himself with Gazimov on top and he's gonna have to deal with him again in side control he has not been very lucky here with Gazimov on top in this position trying to maneuver onto his right hip and does so as Gazimov tries to pin down the right arm opening up some more striking opportunities. Yeah. 
Buckley now has made it to his knees. Kazimov now has his head. I don't know if he's trying to take the back or try to get to the side, but finds himself now on top once again. Three minutes gone by, two left to go in the second round here. Gazimov got in the side control there again. I think it would be in Pokalit's best interest to get this thing stood up. That's where he's had his most success. Gets past the legs of Polkley. And now nearly in a north-south position here. Left hand's going in. Trying to pin down the arms and then let him have it with the striking there as he almost hit him in the back. Slips the left arm underneath. Controlling the head here of Polkley. Pokley, though, does make it back up to his feet. Kazimov knows what he has to do, and he does it. Takes him right back down. But it may have been a case where Pokley really exhausted himself trying to execute that guillotine choke, and that is a very exhausting move if, if you're the one doing it. It's even more exhausting than the guy. Wow, he almost had a submission attempt there. It takes so much energy to be able to execute that hold, and the longer you try to apply it, the quicker your strength gets drained. And still a long way to go in this one. Five more minutes left to go in the fight. There you see Pavel Zhiravlev, special guest, always in the VIP section here. I don't think I've ever been to an Eagles or FIA event where I didn't see Pavel Zhiravlev, not unless he's fighting himself for glory. There you see round three coming up, and we go back momentarily for round number two. Well, Pokley, when he is standing, which hasn't been very much in this fight, he's doing a tremendous job. But so far, from what I've seen, the second half of round one in nearly all of round two belongs to Gazimov, who has pretty much had his way with Pokley on the ground. said at the onset of this contest, hopefully it's kind of in a no-win situation here because if he wins, it's like, well, okay, he won great and he's the champ and he should win. But if he loses, it's like, well, well what kind of champion is he? You know, he, if, the, if the title had been on the line, then then he would be, the, the, his opponent would be the new champ right now. So it's really, uh, as FIA president Doran Damir said, it's a test for him. Is he really a true champion or not? Well, I'll tell you what, he's being tested here. He's being tested big time in this contest. Now we'll see what Pokley can do on top here. Crowd really going berserk here for Pokley, who's in a dominant position here on the ground for the first time in this fight. 
Caught an up kick there momentarily as he slips into the guard here of Gazimov. Oh my, did he find the body with that one. Buckley swinging away with those long arms of his. Let me assure you of one thing. He didn't win the championship by accident. He didn't, nobody ever becomes the champ just by accident here as he grinds away at the body with those right hands again. Pops his head out and tries to rain down more shots from the left side. He's really targeting the kidney area with those right hands. The more that land, the more uncomfortable life is going to be for Gazimov down there on the bottom. Well, this is the kind of round that Pokely needs. Here come the right hand. Left elbow goes in as well. Oh, my. Here comes Pokely. Just smothering him now. Oh, it gives up the back, and here comes the choke. Pokely choking the life out of him. How much longer can he hang on? And there's the tap, it's over. He's out of the cage. Both men on the ground here. I don't think either one of them can believe what happened. Luka Poklik has done it again. The champion. What a tremendous comeback by Luka Pokley. Let's take another look at how it happened here. Pokley was able to finally get on top and do some work. And once he got on top, it didn't take long before the punches came out. Well, he got the stoppage. He got the stoppage by punches. Maybe not the way he wanted it to, ideally. But hey, a win is a win. And look at that choke. Oh boy, that is trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner is by submission with a guillotine in the third round of four. The red corner from Moldova, Luba Pokli. Luka Pokli gets the job done once again by submission for the second event in a row. He will defend the welterweight championship of the world very, very soon here in EFC, and I cannot wait to see who his opponent is gonna be. Coming up next, folks, the co-main event of the evening, a heavyweight contest. 